gotta get it right I remember back when I had the vision now I gotta see it happen It's action over acting I'm not gonna be slacking Try to keep the focus But I can get distracted uh, Hello, welcome to the Sell Your Queen's Home podcast and, Thank uh, you, I'm so honored to be here Yeah, it's a, it's a big day You know, we get to uh, have the first podcast from quarantine and you are our first guest ever so welcome i really appreciate that can you hear me good <laughs> yeah i can hear you perfectly um so tell me during this uh so introduce yourself tell us a little bit about you and uh and i'll do the same so my name is veronica guzman if you want to be politically correct it's veronica guzman <laughs> <laughs> and uh i am the way i know david is because we uh, work together i do mortgages i am a loan officer for the home team of freedom mortgage and um basically what i do is i help people with um qualifying for mortgage for a mortgage when, they, when they're looking for financing on their home um, one to four families, residential, and I basically do all the hold, hand holding from the beginning. I help um, clients, you know, from one get pre-approved to you know all the way to the closing table, and I also figure out what the best program is to, um, you know, get people into, figure out the best rate and things like that. Um, I am a Long Island girl, and. Uh, <laughs> I do spend a lot of time, I did spend a lot of time in Queens before um, our new rules about quarantine. And, um, you know, I'm really happy to, to be here and I'm excited to, you know, try to see how we can all get through this together um, with, with David. So thank you for having me again. Awesome. Well, that was a very nice introduction. Um, so I actually, I've known Veronica, what, for a couple of years now. Um, we've... Uh, she does work. She comes to my office all the time at Keller Williams Realty Landmark. Um, and uh, one of the things that, you know, she's, she's one of the professionals in the industry that I respect the most. So I wanted to, wanted her to come on here and just kind of to start just talking about how, how we are getting through this right now. You know, we, uh, she was on the call with my broker the other day, um, how he was talking about how we need to have, you know, routines and, and different things in order to to thrive, not only, um, you know, as a business, but also personally. So um, what are you doing now to kind of stay sane during this time? So that's, uh, <laughs> it's funny because you have a little giggle when you say that and it's, it's everybody's trying different things and it's, it's really cool to, do, to get on all these calls with different people, different types of people, even people on like Instagram and Facebook who do different things who are outside of the real estate world because taking a little bit of piece of everybody is, is, um, is a really good way for me to be able to stay sane. So today, for example, I got on a call with um, your office. It was with Lisa and she was, uh, she had um, someone, her coach on who was going over um, the different ways that, you know, you can stay focused when it comes to a millionaire, millionaire mindset. So she was going over the book and things like that. And that really helped me because I feel like this is a moment that we have to stay focused on um, kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel here. I feel like it's really important that we start keeping our eyes open and, and keeping focused and uh, driven because, you know, it's easy for us to be able to tell ourselves things, you know, it's easy for us to be able to say like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, you know, this is frustrating. And she brought something up, which I have on my notes here that I thought was uh, really cool. Uh, that was part of the book, one of the secrets of, of um, millionaire, millionaire Mindset. Mm -hmm. And uh, it said, let me see, the first thing, rich people believe I create my life and then poor people believe life happens to me. So that kind of really resonated, resonated with me. That was one of the, I think it's seven different uh, uh, parts of the mindset or categories. And that really resonated with me because I feel like this is the time that this is happening to a lot of people. It's either we're going to do what we need to do to create life, to, to move forward, to, to, you know, this is going to be a time where everybody reveals their true self. You know, what are we, are we going to be um, like, what's going to, what are we going to be able to reveal about ourselves? Are we, you know, if we're not taking the time, if, if what, by the time we come out of this, we don't come up with a new skill or something like that. It's, it's like, what were we doing the whole time? You know? Um, 
So I, I really feel like keeping um, communication with people and, and getting on these, like, you know, watching these videos, these live videos of people giving advice is a way that I've been able to stay sane because I'm getting advice from a lot of different types of people. Um, personally, my routine, what I've been doing, I mean, for, this is why I have my hat on because my roots are growing in. <laughs> so this is one way that I could actually cover them for now until I can go back to the salon. Um, shout out to Millie in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. Um, and I just, um, what I've been doing is, uh, you know, now online ordering is such a big thing. From the first week, I've been going a little crazy with online ordering. I, I kind of stopped because I was getting addicted. But I went and ordered a lot of, you know, like facial products that I could do. Now that I'm going to be home all the time, I might as well try to take care of my skin better. So I've been doing a lot more to take care of my skin. Um, I've been trying to figure out like new, um, at home workouts. I've been looking at videos. I downloaded Sweat. Uh, that's one of the apps that I've been using to, to take, you know, to do workouts with a mat and just simple like five pounder type of things. Um, and, you know, now it's easier for us to be able to just do that in the middle of the day. I mean, if we're working and we could just kind of say, I want to take a break, like now we can actually do that and do something for ourselves, not just go out and get some lunch or not just go out and, you know, just go to the car and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now it's something that you could do that's productive. You know, I've been walking outside. Um, and that's been a little bit more productive. You see a lot more people outside. It's pretty funny. And it's, it's great to see, but obviously you want to stay away from each other. Um, you know, I have people who want to come, kids who want to come over and pet my dog. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's, that's, those are a couple of things that I've been doing to keep my sanity. And again, ordering things online that are going to, help me take care of myself while I can. You know, this we're in our in the comfort of our own home now and I'm able to do certain things that I wouldn't have been able to do in the office or, you know, when I'm in your office or any real estate office really. Um, those are definitely ways that I've been able to keep sane. And with regards to like my work schedule, one thing that I have gotten advice on is to keep the same daily schedule. So if I'm gonna be working let's say, I don't know. I mean, we, you know, the way we work, we work 24 seven, we're always working on no matter how many hours I'm up till one, one, two o'clock in the morning doing, you know, work. And that's just because during the day we can't find the time to be able to, you know, balance the work that we're actually doing. And then also visiting offices and being on the streets and things like that. Um, now what I've been doing is just trying to establish a routine about what times at work. So waking up in the morning, making sure that it's going to be like, let's say an eight to five type of schedule, eight to six. Um, I've been working still after that time, but it's just, you know, on like a need basis. Like if it's something I have to get on my laptop ASAP, it's really easy for me to be, to be able to do it because I have my laptop with me. Um, so that's one thing that I was able to, um, to manage, I guess, is now the times, the schedule that I have every day is establishing a set time frame that I'm working which is key um, that's definitely um, something that I I'm, I'm kind of doing myself um, I I was writing notes while while you were talking um, because I, I did have that same situation where long hours in our industry just what we do um, you know there there is no time limit there's no there's no end to it you can literally just keep working around the clock there's always something to work on someone to reach out to um, something, you know, something that you can do to prevent things from falling through the cracks, new systems you can implement, a whole bunch of stuff. And that, that can really weigh on you. And usually, you know, there's a lot of things that we would say normally, we don't have time for that. Like we would have, you know, we'll have lunches, we'll have uh, classes, you know, at the office or meetings throughout the day and all that stuff. None of that, ha none of that is happening. You know, we, we do have these types of things where we have webinars and such, um, which has been part of my schedule. Uh, basically, I, I, I'm actually redoing my schedule because it wasn't really working for my best benefit over the last week. Um, so just just to stay sane, I'm kind of doing the same thing where I'm, I'm actually, so since the world is so crazy to me, usually what I do is I end up working more just to kind of put everything else to the side. So now that I've decided that that's not the way to go, I'm doing the same thing as you, you know, go, go on walks. Um, I've been doing long runs, um, 
you did the sweat app you said um i actually went old school and i found p90x that i had somewhere stored so yeah exactly nice so i'm bringing that back um so yeah just kind of having that routine of different things and then between all these calls between you know speaking to customers because they're still around in all honesty it's not like people stopped looking for homes or stopped selling homes it's just a matter of now it's delayed when to when who knows but you know and we'll get into that some other time but um you know there's still clients that reach out to us all the time even with you veronica like for whether it's not just with um loans and stuff you're also doing refi refis and different things that are, are being requested of us for me people are come reaching out to me like now should i sell should i even think about it should i hold off um so people are still coming at you but you still have to kind of limit um how long you're going to work just to be able to you know grow ourselves while we we are during this time you know like i think that um, i'm actually implementing more of um you know reading and, and different things to better my business systems that i used to not you know you and i have talked about systems over the years like um things that i always have wanted to implement the excuse is always i don't have time or you know i have something else better to do right now you know it's 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 basically investing a lot of our time not just in our current clients our current mindset our current growth but we're also kind of implementing for tomorrow's clients right like we have to kind of revamp what we do we have to stay on top of all these things i don't know about you but I'm on webinars all day with different laws that changed with different, um, you know, strategies with people asking like, can we show homes? Can we not? Can we do this? Um, and, and I'm sure the same thing with you, you know, different things are happening in, in our, we have the same industry, but on the mortgage side and, and the selling side, it's, it's two different beasts. And, uh, you know, a lot of what I do is, well, a lot of what we both do is face to face and that's something that's changed. So we've, We've uh, adjusted, we've adapted, we do things like this where we do, you know, um, Zoom calls have been like overwhelming at this point. Um, but, you know, there, there's, there's stuff that we, we do and to keep saying, you know, I, I don't know if you remember, you weren't in bold, but you have seen this in our office um, where Gary Kelly talks about or bold talks about the fact that work expands the time allowed. So like, that's something it just that came to my mind when you were talking about that about setting your hours because um you know we can like we said work all day and night but if you if you set a time a schedule of like between this time i don't know nine to six nine to seven nine to nine whatever it might be um if you just set those hours and you're purposeful about those hours then i feel like you do you know you're able to really get a lot done and and not have to you know, overwhelm ourselves right now, right? And give us time to do other things. So what what other things are you doing right now um, to help you in different aspects, let's say in your business and what else, whatever else you could think of? Um, one thing that I have been able to do is like you said, you know, you brought up the whole thing about Zoom. We have been able to take advantage of this now. And um, one good point that Kimberly Horn made today on the, uh, the call that you had earlier with Lisa and the group was that it's a good time to double up on, on everything. So like double up on the amount of appointments you were supposed to have, you know, if, if you had it set to two a week, now we could do like 10 a week. I mean, really that's more than double, but you know, with calls and not having to drive for an hour back and forth and things like that, it's so much easier to be able to schedule these zoom calls. And I have been, um, you know, to keep my business going. I mean, um, other than the, other than my, my active deals right now, I've been able to um, pre-proof people on Zoom calls. I mean, they'll send me their documents via email. You know, uh, uh, most people out there right now are techni uh, technologically now like more savvy. And if they're not, they have kids who are and or somebody who could help them. Um, right. Or they could send me stuff through pictures, really, if it has to be. But you know, if once I take the information over the phone, I get documents via email, anything like that, I'm getting on Zoom calls because like you said, we like to do face-to-face -face interactions. Um, that's the best thing for our business. And I feel like I'd rather have that type of connection if we can. And I, I think people really do appreciate that we're going out of our way to do stuff like that. And, and also the cool thing about Zoom is that um, you could show your screen. So while I'm talking, my little thing comes up, but I'm showing my screen. I'm literally comparing. I'm like, hey, this is your cost. This is your monthly. 
this is your closing cost. This is a comparison between each program that you qualify for. Tell me, you know, tell me what you think type of thing. And I normally show people in person, like what I'm doing, you know, on the screen or anything like that. So it's cool that they could just see it on their own screen. Um, and, and kind of like learn for almost themselves, like what's going on with the numbers and actually looking at it the way I'm looking at it. So it's pretty cool. I mean, even before all this, we, in, especially in the mortgage industry, there were a lot of people who, who were trying to do things like send like videos on, you know, showing them go reading through the, the loan estimate or things like that. Um, and this is just so much easier because it's like live, you know, it's just, it's showing them live and it's not like if they have questions, they could just ask on the spot. It's not like if it's a recording or something like that, they have to call us and ask, hey, what did you mean by that? Or pause it or anything like that. It's just everything's on the spot. Um, other than that, business-wise, it's just the same thing with, you know, keeping on top of these regulations that are changing every day. We've, you know, with we, I work for a corporate company and we are, you know, my higher-ups are on calls constantly about changes and they're relaying these things to us as soon as they find out. Um, and again, it's always going to be a case by case basis. Everybody's situation is different when it comes to, you know, uh, all the all of these updates that come in place. So, you know, as as they come in, we we make sure to address them and make sure that you know we're just making sure that we're able to close these deals and make sure that people are able to at least continue to buy and continue to look to buy and things like that. And one of the things that I um, I appreciate that I. I was on a call earlier with one of your colleagues um, and they were talking about the fact that basically, um, you know, this is not like it was many years ago. Uh, things are much more rigid now. Um, there are a lot more um, kind of uh, stop gaps, like where, where things are more verified more and people are being protected from themselves, if I even want to say it like that. Um, so, you know, we're not going to get into details about, you know, different products and different things that are going on right now, because honestly, everything's very fluid. Like two days ago, I was not essential, even though that's a lie. I've been essential my whole life, but you know, what? <laughs> like I, you know, now all of a sudden real estate agents are essential, um, according to ESB or whatever they said earlier. Um, so that things like that have changed. Like literally I had a conversation with a buyer last night at 1030 we were talking about the fact that they wanted to go see properties and, um, you know, teach, you know, obviously we, at that point, we weren't allowed to, we weren't allowed to do any of that stuff. Um, and I told her, um, just like I'm sure you're telling your customers and clients, uh, like this is changing so fluidly that I have to be in communication with them on a daily basis. Like I, I, everybody's scenario is different, but for example, this, this particular, um, a buyer that I'm working with, they have their property, their co-op in, in, in contract now. So like they're, they're about to sell that place. I don't know where, where that's going to end up either at this point, but um, they're, they're in the middle of selling that and they're looking to buy something. The time, the timeline is not, you know, it's not, it's not moving because there's, everything was kind of frozen, but now I wake up or last night at like midnight, we get an email saying that we're essential and now things are, you know, back in the gray area, I'm not sure what that means, what, you know, um, and then we were on that call with the broker earlier, uh, kind of walking us through what that, what that could potentially look like, what we should, what, you know, what news we're waiting for to know exactly what we can and can't do moving forward, how to protect ourselves, how to protect our clients. So there are a lot of moving parts in our industry and in both, both sides of this. And I know that the, the mortgage industry is still going. There's still people looking to buy. There's still, I still get calls to send to Veronica as far as, uh, you know, pre-approvals. Um, actually, reminder to myself, we need to talk about a potential client for you before I forget. Um, so, um, you know, we, just things are changing. You know, some of these banks, um, they're not they're not going to be able to close in the time needed for some of these people. So, you know, you have to look for alternatives and that's, that's kind of how we work. We, we, as a team, we, we try to find different solutions for you. And that is included in these really tough times where, you know, there is a lot of uncertainty and we have to be the experts, but we have to get, you know, information first in order to be that, you know, ahead of the curve, ahead of what's going to happen next. And, and these times we've never dealt with this, not in our lifetime for sure. 
Um, so, you know, we're, we're going with whatever information we can get. We have credible sources that we look to, you know, just like Veronica goes to our upper, upper management. I have the same thing with my team leader, my, my um, operating principal, my broker, uh, Keller Williams, for me, Keller Williams International and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, there's a lot that we're doing to try to protect our clients as well. Um, so the fact that Veronica's on these calls all the time, you know, just like I am to try to learn the latest and most up-to-date information, the, the, the stuff is too fluid for us to sit here and tell you. And, and I've seen other webinars talk about how, you know, let's talk about how it's a great time to buy or, uh, you know, what, what to do to, to do investment properties and so on and so forth. I haven't done any of that because right now I'm more concerned with protecting the people that I have in my database and in, in deals and potential clients before I tell them anything. Like, do I think that it's a good time to buy? I think every day is a good day to buy, you know, on a, mm -hmm. in, when it comes to real estate, it's all cyclical, whether it's this, whether it was the 08 collapse, whether it was something else, real estate has always been where when the stock market is volatile, that's where money ends up going. And that's where people go to protect their money and their assets over time. So from that aspect, I will always answer that. But like Veronica said, it's on a case by case scenario. If I see someone that's trying to get money out of there, wherever it might be, and they're trying to invest in property because they're scared, but they're going to go bankrupt somehow by doing that. That's not what we're going to encourage them to do. And you know, so we're, we're always looking for those kind of trade-offs. And so that's, that's one of the reasons I invited Veronica on here is because she's one of the people that I trust most in this industry. Um, and like I said, I respect the most. So whenever it comes to, you know, what she's doing as a businesswoman, what she's doing in terms of, um, what, you know, down the road when things are more certain, we'll talk more about the actual mortgages, interest rates, so on and so forth that every, everybody asks for. Um, but things are so, fluid, so volatile. So, I mean, just look at the stock market. You'll get sick if you look at it, you know, for more than 20 minutes, you know, it's like a roller coaster ride. So uh, what we're looking for is just, you know, we, we want to get these tips out to some of the agents in my office too, as to who they should reach out to, um, what, you know, what routines they should be doing. Like I try to follow, like you were saying, the millionaire mindset or whatever that uh, Lisa was going over. I try to follow the millionaire, um, Millionaire Real Estate Agent Energy Plan, I think. It's from the Millionaire Real Estate Agent. I don't know if you've read that one. Um, but it's the book that we always talk about, the Red Book. Um, but basically, it talks about having that schedule of the morning, you know, kind of doing savers from the miracle morning, which is silence. Uh, so meditation, affirmation, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing, with the, which is journaling. So I've been trying to kind of do that. But if you haven't read that book, Miracle Morning, you should totally, that one, is a game changer and it was that was one of the recommendations that Kimberly made today so yeah. that's gonna be on my list <laughs> yeah I'm sure you have a ton of books on your list now with all these different recommendations that people have so yeah. um, just on a separate I guess on a separate note um, what what is the best way to pe for people that might be listening to this to reach out to you and, and kind of you know bend your ear and, and see if you know what help they can get from you um, so right now, really, it's it's it's, it's going to be on. Uh, um, obviously, my cell phone is going to be reachable. I'm six three one eight eight five four eight one two. You could reach me via email. I I could send out my information if you want to Dave, so he could kind of um, give it out to the rest of the people. And I mean, again, I am working remotely, working twenty four seven, the way I kind of always was <laughs> before this. Um, with my, you know, my cell phone and everything like that. That's the great thing about this business that we're able to work remotely if, if it, you know, when it comes down to it, if we have to, um, I can, I just want to add to what you were saying before too. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of people out there who now are looking to take, um, you know, advantage of any opportunity that's out there to invest in property. And rates are still low just so you guys know it's something that you know it's that's that can be said that rates are still low um they are volatile when it comes you know when when this first thing happened this first happened with the with COVID-19 they were kind of very up and down um they're kind of again is still in the threes so it's kind of it's something that people can still take advantage of when it comes to let's say if they want to get some um cash out from the equity of their home to be able to invest in property in the future that's something that is a 
you know, a big thing that's been happening right now. A lot of people are trying to take advantage of that now that the rates are low, um, you know, to be able to invest in the future for, for anything like that. So I definitely am open to, you know, that type of uh, conversation with somebody if they're asking me, you know, what can I do to, to refinance my home and, and get some cash out on it, you know, for future investments. Um, so that's still going on. And uh, just to add, I guess, about the different program changes and things like that. I mean, I'm not going to get too into detail, like you said, you know, but I just, the only thing I can say is that if people are right now temporarily are asking about, let's say, um, any no doc type of loans or bank statement type of loans, those are definitely temporarily suspended right now until further notice because they're much higher risk. Investors are not really taking those right now. Um, so that's going to be the answer to that. And everything else, I mean, again, I'm, I'm reachable by my cell phone and uh, available to, to talk and available for a Zoom call or anything like that uh, for any questions that anybody might have. Maybe it might not be for something that they are going to do in the near right now, but maybe in the near future or a year from now, whatever it is, which is, kind of, is what we were doing before this too. I mean, we, I was always willing to sit down with somebody who might not have been ready at the time, but might need six months to a year. And we could figure out a plan as to what they need to do, you know, to move forward. Right. And that, that I can speak to, at least with you, as far as, um, you know, experience in that situation, you and I have quite a few people that, you know, I've, have gone to you that um, I might've spoken to um, where, uh, they're looking to purchase, and for one reason or another, they may not be able to do that now. Uh, then it may benefit them in one way or another to wait um, to maybe collect more for a down payment, or you know, different different scenarios for different people. Um, but one thing that I will say is that you have always stayed on top of those people, and over time, as as the time gets closer to when they're able to do something. Uh, Veronica has always been there with them every step of the way and they always do comment to me about how you know you've reached out to them or um, you know how you have updated them on, on how maybe now that they're closer to that the scenario changed again and now it's a different game plan so it's always ongoing and and you're very good with with staying on top of that so um, that is something that we we appreciate on our side for sure because it just it shows that we're we're all a team and that we're all trying to get this done together um, so that, that is very appreciated. And, uh, now as far as the cash out and refi, just as a separate note, right? What is the, what would you say the number one reasoning for them cashing out right now is, is it just for the investment or what? Well, most of, yes, right now, a lot of people, the way they're looking at it is they want to be able to purchase something at, after this whole thing. Um, so I mean, they don't really have to be specific as to what they're using the cash for, but what people are using it sometimes for is for debt consolidation. That's one of them okay. that you can get cash out for, again, for other investment uh, purposes. Um, some people are doing it to just fix up their home, maybe make, do an extension on their, on their home or something like that. Um, add a dorm or any, you know, anything like that. They might want to do an, any update to their current home. Um, that's probably the top three reasons that I've seen that people are, are, are getting cash out. Okay, so that's that's something for you guys. If if you are interested, if you're an agent or a potential client, uh, please reach out to Veronica and find out more about how that could uh, help you or your clients in this, especially in this situation. You know, our our broker was talking about this over the last few days about how this is going to be more and more common, especially <clears throat> with interest rates being lower than they were before. Like, let's say somebody bought their house uh, know, a couple of years ago or even last year, where interest rates might have been higher. Uh, they have equity in their home. Um, there, there are some options for some of those people. And um, now with the way the economy uh, is feeling, it's tightening up for some people. Some people have lost it. I mean, not some people today, what, 6.6 .6 million people lost their, are, are going on unemployment or went on unemployment this week. Um, so I can imagine that people can use their cash as quickly as possible for some situations. Uh, and it's something that he told us to expect where this might be something where, you know, when you're talking to people as, as a real estate um, agent, you have to kind of dig deep and find out, you know, especially coming soon, there's going to be, it's the reality of the world. There's going to be other issues. There's going to be um, short sales. There's going to be foreclosures. There's going to be different issues that we're going to have to be more 
aware of and have to have someone like Veronica on, on our team that will be able to help out with maybe some scenarios that can help people from falling into those into those situations. Um, so just something for everyone that's on here to think about is you have to know that you have trusted people working with you in order to help your clients and prevent some, some things that happen. You know, like in, in 2008, I was actually more along the lines of, on your side of the industry. I was in the mortgage well, loan modification side. So I kind of know um, how that end looks and, you know, this has the potential for things like that to be realistically happen, you know, if, if things don't clear up quickly. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something to keep in mind and, and Veronica is always there to, to answer questions for us as agents and for our clients or customers that might be just, you know, even if they're not even in that situation, Veronica is very good at um, playing different scenarios through with them and having them understand their options. Cause that's something very important and something that I've always seen that people struggle with is no one tells you when you buy a house. So in case this happens, these are all your options, right? And even if they told you something like that, when, you know, years pass by and then you're not going to know, you know, options may have changed. There might be other, there could be, honestly, there could be laws passed because this has been so, you know, overwhelming there could be laws passed to change the process of things going forward um but you know veronica and i will have to be informed of all those different things that happen um or at least you know one side of us will have to know like i'm never going to speak on the mortgage side because that's not what i specialize in but i will always know that there's someone that we can rely on to give you that information right um so uh, it's good to know that that's those are the top three reasons though that people are refining right now <clears throat> is there anything that you want to tell people that I may not have asked you or, um, you know, anything that you can think of? The only thing I could say is if something, if you are, let's say like in contract right now or something like that on a house um, and, and something, God forbid, happens with your job, just ask the right questions. You know, if there's something that, that can be done to extend everything, to extend, you know, if, if, you're, if you're not working for a certain period of time, but you have maybe a definite return date, then just, you know, what we've been doing is trying to figure out maybe if there's an extension that the other side, the seller can, can grant um, when it comes to, you know, waiting until they're back to work. Right. Um, okay. You know, so definitely that's one of them. One of the things that, you know, I don't want people to feel like they're um, like discouraged, you know, to, to purchasing something. Cause I know, I know a few people who were, in the process of looking for something and I'll just stop the whole thing only because they're scared. And, you know, it's, I get, I mean, that's, you have, everybody has all the reasons to be scared right now. It's, it's such a, we're in such an uncertain world right now that um, it's better to be cautious if anything, when it comes to things like that. But if, if it's something that like, you know, I'm never going to push anybody into feeling into, into getting a home that's not going to be able to, pay that back you know what I mean I don't want to anybody to ever get stuck in a situation like that and th that's the most important thing right now is for people to stay safe and be able to just live you know and, and be able to live with the roof over their, over their head if they if, if they have the ability to do it I mean that's that's going to be the most important thing at the end of the day see and that that strikes a chord with me because that's one of the reasons that I got into this industry was the fact that I had uh, family that was taken advantage of during a time where that was it was prevalent and it, people were able to do it um, where you know they, they might have purchased things that they shouldn't have that they weren't able to plan it and and to have those checks and balances now to prevent that is one of the things that I really like about the industry and working with somebody uh, and with a company like yours that that's you know that's well aware of that and that tries to do their best by the people involved they want their goal just like mine is to help people that can afford to own a home to own a home, not just anyone uh, who could potentially lose their home, you know, uh, try to force them in just because for whatever reason, you know, we want to do the right thing. That's always been something that um, I've always known about you specifically, um, but doing the right thing really helps out in this business, especially it, it makes me feel better about us uh, in this, this world that we're in right now, because people that want to do the right thing maybe more few and far between uh in the next couple of months um just because you know people will try to uh you know make money any way that they can 
but one thing that I know that we are first and foremost about is making sure that our clients are taken care of, that they're able to get into their home. And for me personally, I, I thrive off of referrals. So I can't have a family move into a house and then all of a sudden, Dave, you got us into a house that, you know, we can't afford what yep. to do to us. You know, that, that hurts me at the end of the day, even though it's not even about that, but that's the reality of the situation, right? I'm, I'm in this forever. So referrals is what I need. I need that family to tell everybody and their mother that they should use us to, to get a home. So um, that, that's really the honest truth. So, um, you know, we, we try to stick to that as much as possible. And, and right now, you know, with, with the different things that are going on, uh, there are going to be people that will want to still buy a home, even though they can't, they, they don't have a job, but you know, there's, it's the reality of the situation. There's going to be some people that will be able to have those extensions and there's, there's going to be people that can't. And those exactly. people will have to, you know, will have to come up with a game plan for each and every specific situation. You know, yeah. like I remember, what was it that um, when you did a panel with us, the KWYP panel, we talked about how if you went on a foreclosure or a short sale, there was a certain amount of time before you were able to buy again. Um, yes, I believe it's um, for a foreclosure. I'm going to have to get back to you on the actual years because um, I, right now I, have, I would have to look at it, but it, it's based on the program. But I, I want to say short sale is four years. I, I want to say four years. Okay. So, so that's, that's what I mean. I think I could have sworn that I had heard seven years for the foreclosure. I don't remember. Uh, don't quote me on those years. Um, but something to that effect. Right. And, and not only that, whatever that was then that might change tomorrow. You know, there exactly. could be, it could be completely different. So, um, that's why it's important to stay in a, in relationship with a mortgage professional with a real estate professional that can walk you through those different scenarios because there could be, like back in the day, there were federal programs that came out when the housing uh, bubble happened in 2008. I have a very strong feeling that in the next few months, there is going to be something like that from the federal, besides the, uh, what they just sent, you know, that $2 trillion package. I'm sure that there's going to be other things uh, that will be on there. Like what is it in New York state? You can't evict people for 90 days. Every, there's a lot of different things that have been frozen or extended based on this being a national crisis. So we, you know, those dates, those timelines, all of that, it's going to be ongoing. It's going to be different. Uh, we're going to have to be on top of that. And, and I'm sure that we'll be able to uh, get that information to everybody that needs it, you know, for sure. Uh, thank you for coming on for a long session here. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think we did pretty good for the first one. I'm going to have more like uh, written out questions for, for the next time. Um, maybe next week. I think that would be. Yeah, we should do something like this weekly and update. I would definitely be on board for something like that. Yeah. And even like you said, if we have guests coming in, I could definitely bring you people um, to, to come in. Like if it was like, a, I don't know, credit repair or anything like that, or even like just influencers, you know, at this point, anybody is, is um, going to be a, uh, an asset in this world that we're in. To, anybody's going to be able to take advantage of that or take some sort of tip from somebody. Yep. Um, so I definitely would be, you can count me in for those. I keep getting